So, Resolve 17, oh my goodness. I've spent the last half a day or so playing around with this, and here are some thoughts to begin with. First of all, in the edit page, there's the inspector has like a million things that you can do now. This is so cool. So if you have a piece of media, let's say over here in your media pool, normally what you do is right click and go to clip attributes to change stuff, but you can actually change most of that stuff over here in the inspector. So this is just like one place to mess with all of your settings for anything that you have selected. I think that's a super cool idea. Basically, anytime you wanna change anything, you go to the inspector, yeah. Another big thing in the edit page is in the media pool, over here we have a new little view mode which kind of combines a thumbnail along with some metadata. This is just a nice little organized list. You can find whatever media you're looking for. It's a small touch, but I really like it. Another thing that's kind of similar to this is when you open up the effects library, the list has been changed to have an icon as well as the name, and everything has hover scrub. So check this out. If I wanna do binoculars, I can just hover scrub over this. Isn't that cool? So it's really easy to see what kind of effects you actually want to use now instead of applying every single one of them, especially great for titles, which you can see a little preview of the titles, but you can also hover scrub and see them. These are little things that are so useful. They're not so flashy, but man, they're useful. So that's a couple things in the edit page. Another just pretty under the radar thing that I'm pretty excited about is you can export timelines now. It's almost like one of those things like, oh, well, couldn't you already do that? If you wanted to share a project before, you would have to actually export the project. You could export it as a archive or as a project file, and you could send it to somebody and they could open it, but you can actually just export a single timeline. And so somebody who has a similar project and has the media already in their project can just open this new timeline. So I was playing around with this earlier. I sent my buddy Sam this media and he sent me back an edit timeline. So I can just open this and just drag it into Resolve. If there's any extra media, I can relink that. And now this is the edit from my buddy Sam. Isn't that cool? And I didn't have to open a new project or anything like that. It just lives here. It's just another version of this same timeline. What's really cool about that is that let's say, okay, this is our current timeline. I wanna make sure that we only work on this. I can actually right click on a timeline and disable it just to kind of remind myself that, hey, this is not the one we're working on. This is the one we're working on. Super important. If you've ever worked on the wrong timeline for a few hours when you're collaborating with other people, you know what that's like. There's also some collaboration features in Resolve, which I do want to get into, but this is like the version that everybody can use, whether you have Studio or not, is you can send timelines back and forth. You can also do this with bins, which is really cool. If you guys wanna hear more about that, let me know in the comments. Okay, couple other really cool things. You can do a lot more fancy stuff here in the edit page, and there's way too much to show you just in this little video, but I wanna show you something cool. So like, let's grab some text and put it over this B shot, let's say, and we'll just say Bs. We can actually set this text to be a mask for this layer of video. And that's just built into the inspector under settings, under composite. Composite mode, we'll call this alpha. And this one, we'll put above this mask. And under composite mode, we'll call it foreground. Check that out. It cuts out the video based on that mask. Isn't that awesome? And then you can change this right here in the timeline. Gosh, it's slick. That's gonna make things so much faster. There's also some cool fusion effects that you can apply to footage a lot easier. So like if I wanted to look at this guy through binoculars, I can grab my fusion effect and just drag it onto my clip and now we have the binoculars thing. Pretty freaking rad. And then we can adjust things here in the inspector. It's just really slick. And you can build these yourself inside of fusion. In fact, I even did a test on it. Let's say this is pretty good, but you want a really cloudy, just very quickly added circle just to see if this effect works. Well, it sure does. Look at that, so cool. <laughs> Let's jump over to the color page. The color page has a lot of stuff that is different. Basically down here it has been somewhat redesigned and I'll dig into more color stuff here in a little bit, but let's look at a exciting feature first, the magic mask. The magic mask is only available in the studio version, but dude, look at this. The magic mask is designed to basically roto people. Watch this. All I did was just draw an arbitrary line on this guy. And now it's figuring out where he is and what shape he should be and all of that stuff. And we're tracking it back and forth relatively quickly for something cool like this. And how well did it work? Well, what if we made him pink? It's pretty freaking good. It's not perfect, but dang. Look at that. 
And I've tried this on a bunch of different footage. I've tried it full body, somebody walking for 30 seconds through bushes. Totally works. I don't understand it. It's actual magic. Actual black magic is what it has to be. How do they even do that? It's nuts. Another thing that's very exciting and of note in the color page is the color warper. This is one of the coolest tools I've probably used for color. And it might look a little weird, but here's how it works. Let's make it bigger, shall we? Basically, this remaps the different hues and saturations of the image to other hues and saturations of the image. So if we wanted this kind of greenish yellow part to be, I don't know, more red, we can grab the greenish yellow part here and push it more towards red. And it starts to kind of make this more of a you know, kind of a fall look, right? If we want it to be more saturated, we push it away from the middle, just like you would on a color wheel or by looking at a vector scope, further away from the middle is more saturated. And man, it is just really cool. There are so many features to go over here, like every button does something really cool, but man, that's super powerful. One thing that I think is really neat, you can actually adjust things just on the image. And so if you click on the image with your eyedropper and you move around, it actually moves the dot on the little chart. And so you don't even have to like click here and then go over and move stuff around. You can just click and drag and then look at the chart and move it where you want it to go, right? So let's make that more purple or whatever. That's really neat. But not only that, if you hold down shift, depending on which direction you drag, if you drag up or down, it makes it more saturated or less saturated. And if you hold shift and drag left or right, it just changes the hue. And so you can lock it to hue or saturation and you can just kind of look at your image and adjust things. Like let's say, hey, let's say we don't like this yellow and grab it, hold shift and drag left or right to adjust mostly that yellow. And depending on how detailed you wanna get, you can up the different spokes of this wheel. Let's say make 16 different spokes. And now you can get really detailed with what you wanna do. And now I can just change this color without affecting the other color so much. Just nuts, man. So cool. With this color warper up, you can kind of just look at your image and do some adjustments. This kind of reminds me of Cinema Grade a little bit. And honestly, it just gets me more excited for Cinema Grade because uh, what I really want to do is click in here and brighten up his face and everything and kind of do that. Because like, man, once you start adjusting stuff on the image, ooh, it's just, it's addictive. But for now, there's no fancy way, at least that I've found, to do that. But it's almost there. It's a really nice little tool to add to your color stuff. It's so cool. The other thing that everybody's going to be happy about I know I'm happy about is audio in Fusion. So I'll grab this clip and move over to Fusion. And if we open up our keyframes, twirl down media in, zoom in a bit. Once we play this back once, it will write that waveform. And now we have our audio here in Fusion. And if this were music or whatever, or a beat, you could line stuff up to that beat. The other thing is something we've all wanted. If we add a marker to a clip and then go into Fusion, the marker shows up here in the keyframes panel. Makes it a lot easier to do all the things that we wanna do, right? And this also works with sequence markers, which is pretty neat. So there's a ton more things to go over. I'm going to be making a bunch more videos, but those are some thoughts on DaVinci Resolve 17, some of the coolest features I'm excited about. 